Hey everybody, Luke and I are here and we're super excited. We waited until we could be in person next to each other to do this video for you guys. We've both been doing a ton of on-site visits for our worship ministry school students. So we've packed these Pelican cases in a way that we've found really helpful for ourselves and maybe you'll find helpful for you guys as well. Let's talk about the Pelicans themselves, right? Yeah. These mm -hmm. are the Pelican 1535s. They're the Pelican Airs. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to go in airplanes. And I bought a black one because I wanted to be cool and I love everything black, but everyone at the airport has a black one. So I had to put all these cool stickers on mine to know which one is mine. And Luke was smarter. I'm a big accent guy. So I went with the kind of dark charcoal and the orange slash yellow uh, handles. So. Yep. We still need to put, uh, you know, QR codes on our name tags or our name plates here. Oh, yeah. But soon to come. Do you want it in slow-mo? You want it like 120? <laughs> so Luke showed me this thing. I didn't know this even existed. I screwed mine into the top. I, yeah, here's, I mean, just kind of from the initial, like, research, I liked the zipper pouch because I watched one video where a guy, like, pulled it out set it aside okay. at his workstation and it was just like there for him and he didn't have to go back to his Pelican, he could move it. And so you can screw these in or you know do whatever you want to mount to the back, but um, I normally just kind of prop it up like this and then sometimes it falls and makes a really loud bang, but I mean, it's a nice little option. But this is super yeah. cool because it's got big zipper pouches that you can fit just a ton of stuff in and then that's added on top of this. So normally when you order a Pelican, it comes with foam and doesn't do a whole lot besides right. protect your stuff, but we've got plenty in there. Yeah, yeah, and on the inside, I have the Trek pack, which is cool because if you're moving really fast, you'll cut your knuckles up <laughs> on the edges. But it's also just less, it gives you a little bit more space. The foam is tougher and you mm -hmm. have... And I went with the foam insert and the foam insert comes with kind of these like bungee straps. Okay. So you can kind of get a little bit more, because correct me if I'm wrong, but once you put that in, you kind of have to yeah. leave it or it essentially has, set it up new uh, yep. if you want to add more dividers. So the foam gives you a little bit more flexibility kind of for day to day, but I think both have their advantages. They do the same thing. Um, you know, I think, I think we should talk about our label makers. It's very near and dear to our heart. It might be it one is. of my favorite additions like since we started the, oh, yeah. the journey. So uh, we've got the Brady M211. And this is fairly recent. Like it's yep. within the past year maybe year and a half it's come out. This is by far, it's just the best label maker out there. I don't know that there's a better one out there right, right now. It's Bluetooth to your phone. So instead of having a massive keyboard, you'll notice that there's not a keyboard on here. You just get out your phone, you pair it to Bluetooth, and then it's got an auto cut. So when it you know, prints the label, it just cuts it, drops it, and it's got a belt clip on it, and it charges via USB-C. No batteries to bring on trips. Right. Yep. None of that stuff. You just plug it into USB-C, charge it up. And you can put a bunch of different cartridges in here, just like any label maker, but uh, white on black, black on white. You can do uh, cable wraps. I mean, I think are probably the thing that we use the most yep. for is doing like XLR cables or ethernet cables and just labeling things correctly so that when you're looking at both ends, you know which cable is which. So. That's the Brady M211, link in the description. We're pausing this video for just a moment to tell you about our sponsor, Digital Glue. If you're in the media production game, whether it's at a small church, a large church, or anything in between, you're gonna wanna hear about Creative Space. It's a one-of-a-kind, all-inclusive storage service, which provides an affordable on-site server, which you can access globally via VPN, and the Creative Space team takes care of all of the tech. Your church doesn't need a dedicated IT staff member to support it. You guys know I've been making videos for the Church Run channel for over six years now, and my team has grown to a place where it's not just me editing videos. We needed a solution that could handle the multiple terabytes of footage we capture every single month, and gives us maximum flexibility for collaborative editing. That's why we started using Creative Space's Rogue Pro solution here at Churchfront. Here's the lowdown. Create a storage space and share it with your team. Set up templates with variables to rapidly create folders and project files, ready with custom naming and permissions. Transfer assets and mount directly to your desktop with built-in tools for seamless collaboration. 
Every folder and file has a shareable link and you can tag assets to quickly find what you're looking for with libraries. There's no need for each of our team members to copy all of the assets onto their own hard drives, which saves us a ton on storage costs. We can edit off the same server, whether we are all in one office or we are collaborating remotely. Yes, network speed does matter, but the Creative Space team is there to help find solutions like optimized proxy files or remote desktop for slow connections. The cool thing about Creative Space is we are able to collaborate from anywhere using the same files. I've dabbled with other network attached storage in the past, but many of them were unreliable, susceptible to ransomware, and a headache to set up and maintain. The Rogue Pro server, the intuitive software, the proactive support, and that we have the performance and capability we need while keeping everything up and running smoothly. Ready to simplify your church creative team's workflow? Click the link in the description and schedule a demo today. And speaking of making sure cables work on both ends, we got these Millennium, which it goes together, but the best part is that they come apart. So you can go, you know, Say you're running a cable from this side to the other side, you can actually test it. The older one I had, like it was together. Yes. And it was like, well, this is only helpful for patch cables. So yep. this has been awesome. This um, is especially great if you're tracing cables too. Yes. Like as yeah. when we're in old, when, I won't say old, but when we're in churches who have been established for quite a while, there might be cables that are not labeled and we've got to figure out where the other end is. And so we can kind of, you know, you can send somebody upstairs and essentially plug in one end of the cable on one end of this, and then the other person can kind of have the cable nest and go from cable to cable and test until you find the one that lights up green, and then you know which cable is which. And then you label it. Then you label it. And so these things are awesome. These are only like 50 bucks online. So we'll put a link in the description for these guys. Uh, I would say this is my second favorite item. That yeah. You found both of these this year. So props to Adam on, on the gear, on the Quip. Are people calling it Quip? I don't know. I'm I'm over 30. So. Yeah. Next, oh, also always have some spare printer yes. cartridges. You know, some some label cartridges in here. I've got white on black and black on white. Always, I I have always started to carry a couple things, mm. a network switch, just an unmanaged like little TP Link, you know, powered. What is this? Five port network switch for things like plugging in your console into you know like if you're trying to daisy chain a bunch of stuff or if you're just trying to get something on a network, this network switch can be awesome. And then I really like this guy. This is another TP-Link product and it is a, essentially a couple things. It can be like a shared ethernet connection or it can create its own IP address. So it's, it's essentially oh, wow. a router, um, but it can also extend off of things. So two things I use this for is to create an IP address for consoles. You know, if you're, if they don't have their console connected to, yeah. The network that, and you want to use the iPad or you want to um, get the offline editor up and running, you can plug this puppy in. It's got an Ethernet port on it and then it's got all the information on the back. Super tiny, super compact, power on the back, and then it, it creates an IP address. The other thing that I like this for is if I want to like check my bank account information at the hotel, mm -hmm. I can plug this in and create a secure network as opposed to getting on the hotel's Wi Fi. So these things are super inexpensive and I think they're worth it when you're traveling. Guys, Dylan, come up, C come here, come here. Get a close up of that label. I mean, come on. That's a Brady M211. Fancy schmancy right there. You can load in icons and graphics from your Dropbox, iCloud, Google Drive account, and then you can put it on your label. And speaking of labels, I also just carry a basic one for small stuff. It's nice to not have to use the expensive label if you're just right. doing something little. I usually carry a, this is like the grab bag of uh, audio stuff. So I have a spare XLR cable, a patch quarter inch cable, and an SM57, because you are you might need a microphone. Yep. And, and especially at churches who aren't used to or don't have a talkback mic, oh, I can yeah. like whip out the XLR, whip out the SM57, and run a rehearsal, and I don't need them to like go digging in their closets for stuff, patch it right on the back of the board. So. This little kind of grab bag is, is awesome. And then I have a DI as well, which sometimes, it's a very similar thing. Like, oh, our DIs, none of them work. Okay, yep. well, we'll use this for rehearsal or whatever. Do you bring an audio interface with you? Not yet, but I have room for one. Might I recommend just this little guy? Oh, wow. A little Behringer, you know, it fits kind of right in, nice and snug. USB powered, pretty one channel, 
mono a mono. Yeah. So and audio tools. I have a, a dB meter. This one, I, I've just had this like since I started doing audio engineering. I know they make smaller ones. Totally. That would fit in here better, but this is what it's I got. Old faithful. Yep. Old faithful. I usually carry an SD, an SD card kind of case. Um, and let's talk about the measure. Oh my gosh. Bosch. The Bosch. Bosch. I don't know how you say it. Blosh. The Blaze, 165 feet. So this is just really awesome for almost every room I go to. I measure the room in case they want to do a sound system upgrade where they actually, we put it in a ray calc or whatever it would mm -hmm. be to figure out, you know, where we point the speakers and hang them and all that. But it's also useful for other things just like, okay, you know, next time I'm out, we're going to run some cables. Let's see how far it is from here to there. Yep. So... Yeah, especially if you're running custom length cables. I mean, this is, you just shoot, at least you know a frame of reference for how long you're gonna need. Like, um, for example, to the confidence monitor, we're at 78 feet. Took you four seconds. Right. right. If we were to try to run tape measure that. Man. Nope. Plus, tape measure is too big. Oh yeah. This guy, super tiny. Yeah, and that's, that's a theme with the whole thing, is trying to find small stuff that fits well. So I've got uh, a drill. For racks, mm -hmm. um, just being able to do put together racks really quick. Uh, it took Luke and I a very long time to find one that was less than six inches that TSA would not take from us. Um, headlamp, I'm pretty sure you've got one. Come on, get it going right here. I'm not gonna say where this came from or what it is because it's like an LED and it's like that weird. Oh, it flickers. Yeah, yeah, the flicker, and I'm not a fan. But yours might be better. Well, I don't know because I've not been in a dark space yet. I've always had like a, you know, light space to work in. But and yeah. I'm pretty sure I don't even have batteries in this thing right now. So I've got a Tascam DR10L. Oh, wait. Like one of these guys? One of those. Oh, we're not using them to record because Dylan has better stuff. But <laughs> Luke also sent me this power brick, this Anchor GAN Prime. Yep. Uh, but it's got USB-A and two USB-Cs, and one of them, I think, is 65 watts? Yeah, if you're, if you're charging all three at the same time, it downgrades it to about 35 watts, I think, or 30 watts. Yep. But if you've got, like, your computer, and it takes you 65 watts, then you can plug it in by itself over USB-C, and it'll charge it at 65 watts. And this thing is so small. Yeah. So small. Amazon Prime Day, baby. Anchor runs some great deals. And again, tiny, takes up no space. And then all the cables for it, you know, I got a little CalDigit so I can plug my laptop into their Dante network or whatever. Um, you know, phone. Okay, this is an important thing. Most rental cars have both USB-C and USB-A, but I carry both anyway. Flash drive. So this has a Mi 1 uh, set up on it, but this is just handy to have. And oh, an then, ME1, like for Allen and Heath yep. in ears. Yep, good deal. But just all the cables, USB cable in case you want to plug mm -hmm. into their console. Yeah, US, things that we, I think cables that we always need are like obviously phone charging and flash drives and then especially USB-A to USB-B cables. I feel like I'm always, you know, whether it be for an audio interface or again, the console to the computer, I've got all the USB to, or USB-C adapters for my MacBook trying to make sure that I can, whatever they throw my way, we've got connectivity on there. So I've got a, yep. a pouch just like this, but it's, it's a little bit bigger and just has adapters and, you know, adapters and dongles and dongles and dongles. Uh, Belden toolkit. Oh man. So we uh, have been... On the hunt. Yeah, this is, this is a great kit for terminating SDI. Just the whole thing, cuts the cable, trims it back, and then Compresses, compresses it. Compresses it, yeah. yeah, using the compression ends. So this toolkit is like 275. So yeah. it's just been easier for us to come on site and terminate the cables so that people don't have to buy them. But if you're doing your own a lot, this is the kit. And then the last thing that's in the, the bottom of mine is an AeroPress. Oh, I, mine is at home, brewed with it this morning. Yeah, well, I guess there's this too. And drum key. Okay, drum key is critical because on every job site I've been on thus far, I have not had a drum key, because yeah. I'm not a drummer. I'm an acoustic guitar player, and I every single trip I'm on, I'm like, we should tune your drums. And they're like, we don't have a drum key. And then I don't have a drum key, and I feel like an absolute noob. Just so you know, I ordered a two-pack, so now I'm set. And if the drums were in tune, that'd probably be indicative that they have someone with a drum key. But yes. the fact that they're not tuned is probably because they don't have one. Yep. And then flash drive that's USB-C to USB-A, like you just flip it around. Ooh, nice. And then it's on this little 
Like multi-tool thing. Multi-tool thing. Yeah. So super handy. But again, AeroPress, it cinches all up. It's about this big. When you take yeah. it, it's plastic, so it doesn't break when you drop it. And then easy cleanup. You don't have to like do dishes or anything. It just rinses off. Super and, small. Yep. If you don't know what an AeroPress is, welcome to the real world. Uh, maybe top. Let's see. Yeah. What else we got? I have some Velcro, like some... Yeah. Just some, a spool of Velcro, random stuff like that for like organization and connectors. Always carry a couple, couple cases of like triple A's, double A's, and nine volts because oh, you just yeah. never know what runs on batteries. Got a ton of these SDI connectors for the, the Belden kit. And then I thought these were cool. Actually, Michael Curtis talked about these in his Pelican breakdown, but these little target cards yeah. for the Bosch um, or the Bosch, whatever it's called. Bosch. But if you needed to like really get specific on where you were gonna shoot your measurement to, mm -hmm. you could tape this up somewhere and capture, like ex you know, you could aim for it a little easier than just kind of shooting it at a wall. So I do carry these with me. Um, and then I also, just to kind of demonstrate some stuff um, for people who are either trying to do broadcast stuff. I usually carry a cam link so that they can, you know, capture card for their camera, get it into their pro presenter setup or whatever um, they're trying to do. So Klein tools is, I feel like it's standard. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's other tools out there, but this is a super easy piece of equipment to carry. If you're terminating Cat5, Cat6 cable, RJ45 ends, uh, this has the RJ45 and the RJ11s on it. So if you need a smaller uh, end or connector you could. Um, but the thing I love about the Klein tools one is that it does all the color mapping for you. So it has, if you've ever done Cat5 mm -hmm. cable, it comes in the spool where everything is spooled up into pairs of colors and you have to unspool it, stretch it out, put it through the ends in the right order and it's pretty tiny cable. So having a little color diagram to where you don't have to have your phone out or Anything else like that to like see it is just very nice and then it lines up with the way that the end goes in to terminate. So makes it for a quicker process, although Cat5 I feel like is never a quick process. But it does help that it does, we use the pass-through ends so uh -huh. that it cuts it. Yep, 100%. And then I have these, like I'm never mm -hmm. doing really power when I'm out, but like sometimes it's helpful to have a strip tool. Yep. Um, and then this, flush cutters, this is like, $3, I don't know why more people don't have these. Cutting the ends off of zip ties yep. and having it not slice your hands open, uh -huh. like it cuts it flush. Well, first of all, people, stop using zip ties. Yeah. Like just in your AV setups, nobody wants to be that guy who's gotta undo the zip tie and then everything that looked so neat under your desk now falls down. So stop using zip ties. Velcro ties. Velcro ties, just do us all a favor. I've got a quarter inch patch in here for like, Somebody needed to do a monitor send or something. Power for my interface and a wire stripper. Oh. Mm. I think they call these goosenecks. I don't know. Apple has a weird word for them, but what, like, what, if you were looking for one of these, they like go in your power brick yep. or they go in older power bricks. I don't even know if they, yeah, because they still make the extension for your yep. power adapter. But man, if I if you lose your, you know, gooseneck or whatever this thing is called, uh, I just have a spare. Used to work at Apple. I have a ton of these laying around the house. So Adam, what do you wish you had in your Pelican? Like if you could add one or two more pieces of equipment into your Pelican. I mean, I'm gonna put the cam link in. Um, I don't think I had anything too different. Oh, you know what? I do have something that you don't. An air tag. No. An air tag. I do have one. It's in here. It's stuffed in there. I forgot to talk about that. Yep. I carry a small stream deck. Um, and then all the ends for the SDIs. That's pretty much it. That's the only thing that's different. So yep. I think a cam link, an audio interface. I like your network stuff, mm. the network switch and the, the router. I mean, the drill is a big one because we've done, we've done so many jobs that have, you know, you need an AV rack for like your stage box or wireless gear. And it's just so nice to be able to just speed that process up. And I feel like up until this point, haven't had one that fits in a TSA compliant case right. that yeah. you can carry on and not get taken from you. And so I'm always just stuck looking for a screwdriver or bringing a screwdriver. And it's just, it takes so long to build those racks. Just and for all time. the people that are gonna comment and say, just check your bag, <laughs> no. <laughs> Is there something that you wish was in your case? Well, I definitely need the, the drill. Yeah. or the electronic screwdriver. Like, I don't have a decibel reader, so I think having one of those is helpful. But ultimately, there 
honestly, I think we did a lot of prep for this where there's not a lot that I get to a site and think, oh, I wish I had this, you yeah. know? I mean, this, for me, this pretty much takes care of the church as we service. And I would say the most used thing, the two most used things in this, in these Pelicans is the label maker and the cable tester. Yeah. By far on any site visit we go on, I mean, not including the camera. I think we're always labeling cables when we're doing installs or updates for systems. And the cable tester is like, oh, are we experiencing audio issues or do we not know where that goes? Okay, let's use a cable tester. Yeah, if you travel or if you don't travel even and all you, you're just a tech director or worship leader at a church, those two items should be yep. in your office or tech booth or somewhere. I think that concludes our Pelican tour. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And maybe we'll do another rendition of this like a year from now and see what has gotten smaller or what we've taken out because we don't use it or what we've added. And let us know in the comments, like if there's something we should add to our Pelicans that we're completely missing out on for an on-site AV consult slash install yeah. in a worship and tech environment. Uh, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time.